Cheers. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. I'm gonna ask each of you this question. <laughs> so who or what inspired you each to become filmmakers? I just always liked uh, writing down stories and um, as I grew up and found different ways to express different, to tell different stories, I found that I really enjoyed the visual medium of film to tell stories, um, which is what I got into more into high school. And uh, yeah, once I started making films, I found I thought it was a great way to, uh, to express myself. And get Amazing. It, yeah. All right, Alex? Um, I don't know, I just always liked, uh, you know, expressing myself visually and mm. uh, uh, I went through uh, some time as an illustrator and a, a comic book artist and uh, um, I love film, especially now because right. uh, uh, the technology sort of uh, become caught up to uh, the place where, you know, someone can just make their own film pretty much and right. you know, I think that's a really powerful uh, place to be. Lena, how about you? Well, I think um, I was always sort of a, a writer or writing a lot and reading and, and all that just mm -hmm. growing up. And, uh, and I did a, you know, English Lit and Creative Writing degree, but I was also an actor for, and still am an actor. Um, but now uh, it's really great to be able to combine this kind of, these two sort of elements of, of what is in fact just storytelling. And I think being an actor already, I considered I was just part of this, you know, cog in the wheel of telling stories, and right. now um, it's been such a, a thrill, and and kind of it's still an incredible uh, experience to, to be able to see something that you sort of imagined in mm -hmm. your mind, and then actually have it out there, and to have other people watch it as well. It's right. it's uh, it's it's amazing, and I I don't think I'll. Stop. Well, hopefully, <laughs> knock on something. But yeah, it's it's a it's a thrill. Amazing. All right. Uh, yeah. So my uh, I suppose my parents were really inspirational. I mean, they're both kind of very artistic. My my dad's sort of uh, like an art teacher and a potter, so he was always pushing me into kind of something artistic. Um, and we used to get we saw like a bunch of plays. I remember I think the first play I saw uh, was uh, the Diary of Anne Frank, mm -hmm. and uh, that actually inspired me to direct a, a theatre uh, little group um, of the Diary of Anne Frank when I was like, 18 sort of thing. Um, and I remember being really uh, thinking that was so great to do that. And uh, then later on um, I was given uh, like, a, like a DVD, no actually it wasn't DVD, it was like an old VHS back in the day of uh, Fantasia. Um, and sort of that old, sort of the old Disney movies really inspired me because I do a lot of animation now, so that was my biggest sort of uh, inspiration back then. So, yeah, and now it's, um, yeah, just being able to tell stories through the, the medium of like animation is, right. is, a, is an amazing um, thing for me and uh, you can sort of go in any direction um, and sort of, you know, suspend whatever reality in any way you want. Now, what do, you, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges for Canadian filmmakers today? Uh, well, I guess it's uh, the same uh, the same as any sort of filmmaking process, is uh, getting people to uh, believe enough in your uh, concept to, uh, to uh, you know, help you financially uh, produce the thing. Um, it's, you know, I don't think it's a secret that, uh, that film costs money to make. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's financing. Financing, financing. is a big one, That's of course. Pretty, yeah. Pretty Pretty dull yeah. thing to start off with. <laughs> no, but but or it's a reality, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. you need to disturb that for sure. I hate reality. Yeah, no, no, I know. That's why I work in animation. <laughs> Zero reality. There's nothing there that's real. Right. Anyone else wanna? I think uh, yeah, just building our own voice as a Canadian industry and making it separate from Hollywood, because a lot of the Canadian films that I've seen. Uh, have a very different kind of feel to them and right. um, I've always really enjoyed all the Canadian films that I've seen um, and just getting our voice out there and making it distinct and needed out there in the world. I think you just said that yeah. really beautifully I, and, uh, and ultimately besides the ones that everybody says or knows and right. complains about financing and then obviously the sort of whole audiences because mm. since it is um, easier in some ways to make films. It, 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 it doesn't necessarily translate to being uh, easier to see them because they might right. be 
so many of them and, and how to sort of find those, uh, like our, our colleagues' mm. films, our, the Canadian films, like where right. to find those things, how, to, how, how do we get the word out to, to see them? Right. Because there is brilliant stuff being made here. Being made, absolutely. Yeah. So then, just to follow up to that, how do you manage being independent filmmakers and make a living? For me, it's weird because I've been in some way I'm I'm an I'm an actor so I work mm -hmm. and and it's weird to say that my day job now is as an actor because it really right. didn't used to be like that and you usually would that wouldn't really work right. you know what I mean and in ways they're they're similar because you're constantly you know you're putting things out there of and course. then you're just waiting right. for somebody to yeah. sort of say yeah we like that or you know and um, so yeah it's it's obviously a struggle to find this kind of mm -hmm. balance and I'm also I'm, I'm new to filmmaking really it's just yeah. a second little Thing I've right. done so yeah well I'm also just like emerging into the industry right. Uh, right now and so it's the kind of thing where people tell you again and again it's going to be really tough and you have to like really stick with it um, and I think just keeping that passion and if you have to have other jobs to help finance it or find funding and just doing what it takes to continue doing what you love so I mean obviously I know it sounds like you're all doing different things but if you couldn't be a filmmaker, what would you be doing? Would you still be doing some of the work that you're you're doing, or is there something else you would change if, if given given you know the the opportunity? I was just talking with my sister about opening a pickle shop. <laughs> <laughs> that I wasn't expecting. No, no um, we really like dill pickles. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I was just joking with her, kind of how fun it would be to kind of like perfect the recipe and the perfect place. Right. I hope nobody's going to take my idea now. No, <laughs> no, no. Gourmet um, pickles. But Ke in Kensington yeah. Market, totally. big barrels of pickles. Pick pickle, gourmet. Uh, yeah. Did, yeah. If you got yeah. recipe ideas, send them. I do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But in reality, that's probably will not happen. But it would be kind of a fun idea. So, hey, I'm open to stuff. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. All right, Nathan. Uh, this might okay. This might sound creepy. <laughs> Um, it's not really creepy, but but I've because um, I come from a long line of uh, kind of massage, uh, but like um, reflexology. That's what it is. Because because right. I, I do I do re I do really reflexology. But as soon as you sort of interpret put the word massage there, it becomes creepy. Uh, that's what we kind of do in the family. So we kind of uh, right. when I go back to Australia, as soon as I land, we kind of do this weird thing where we kind of go in a sort of like a circle. <laughs> Kind of do a bit of a reflexology and like head sort of massage kind of thing. So right. I kind of I would do that as a job actually. I'd even right. do it now um, and have something on the side. Now you've all directed films um, that either have young people in them or are for young people. So what um, what drew you to focus on on uh, making films for 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 kids and and young people? Was there anything that that drew yeah. you initially? For me, well, it also I made a bunch of little, I wrote a bunch of short stories, and that's where these films come from. So, Winter, which is playing at the festival, is the second in a series, and uh, the series is called Little Whispers. Mm -hmm. The first one, mm -hmm. The Vow, played last year, right. but it's all about kids using their imagination to solve their problems. And um, what uh, drew me to that is, I think um, I grew up with three sisters, and we spent a lot of time making up games, mm. making up stories, and also, but also traveling and being right. aware of what, what we had and maybe what other kids didn't have. And, and uh, so I just think from the kids' viewpoint is something that's so fascinating and, and sort of fresh and, mm. uh, well, that sounds obvious in a way, but um, it's something that we forget, um, you know. So I like the idea of trying to see through those eyes again, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and how I used to see the world, and maybe try not to to, to leave that behind. Because I think right. that we, all of us, as we grow older, we right. forget, and there's stuff to, to learn from those sort of fresh eyes. Oh, absolutely. And similarly, I'm drawn to children or young protagonists just because I love their perspective of how they look at the world, and mm -hmm. they just see it so differently. And I do think we sometimes lose that as we grow up, and so I like going back and exploring that and going into how they look at the world. No, definitely. It's kind of one of those weird ones where it's like, uh, you know, when you don't really feel like you've grown up that much yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of creating stories that are very uh, somehow personal to you and you forget that you're maybe 
you know, 40 years older than what you should have, you know, that, then, then the actual kids that you're, you're actually uh, creating. But, um, but also I like the, uh, the straightforward, um, you know, honesty that a, that a kid has, like they're not going to kind of give you some analysis that's just straightforward, like, you know, this is how I feel. Um, emotions are like very open so I kind of like that idea that um, you really know um, what the um, how the character feels because they're very um, I don't know what the what the exact uh, terminology is sort of thing but they're just in your face and I like I like that about uh, kids stories sort of thing yeah they can no be filter. yeah no, the filter, filter, no filter exactly yeah, yeah, absolutely and also also um, imagination hasn't been uh, necessarily deadened at that stage, do you know what I mean? There's a sort of a, a thing where uh, kids, when they're, um, when they're sort of, very, especially very young, um, don't know necessarily the, the differences between reality and, and imagination sort of thing. They kind of, it's all kind of blurred into one. Uh, I think as adults we tend to kind of say, you know, you know, get real all the time and it's like, it's a bit of a shame in some ways, yeah. Part of the thing is, uh, 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 with Norma's story, it's an environmental film about climate change impact, and right. uh, and so I just wanted to do something that, so later on, my kids will say, well, at least you tried doing something. Right. Yeah, that's so amazing. it's uh, you know something something for them, and something that uh, I think when you're when you're explaining things like that, you have to explain them to uh, younger people as well. Give them uh, some some element, of, give them an element of hope in it. Mm -hmm. um, show them that it's a problem that, that can be worked through and uh, you know you're dealing as you're saying with people with with open minds um, sometimes more so than, than the adults and uh, yeah, it was a pretty that was an emotional film that one actually yeah I was like uh, you know, getting a bit of, getting all teary when I was watching that uh, that film yeah I liked the because I, I thought it was really great the way you had the um, you know it was talking about kind of there was some kind of quite not sort of shocking, but you know, you know, she's like drinking the blood, and it's very much of the, you know, of the land and and um, and reality. Um, it's sort of very matter of fact, but, but yeah, it was it was a great film. Yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna shift gears a little. Um, so, do you watch films um, mostly in a cinema, on um, your smartphone, the airplane, a computer screen, and does screen size matter for you when you're watching a film? I definitely pick which films I, I want to see in the cinema right. versus, oh, I, I, I can, it's okay if I watch that on my mm. TV or on my laptop right. or whatever. I don't like, I don't think I've ever actually watched, to be honest, a, a film, or definitely not a full length film on my phone. Like if you're flying a lot, um, like I tend to save those movies um, for a particular type of thing. So right. it's like stuff that I would never watch at the cinema. Okay, give me an example. Now uh, I need to know what you're watching on a plane. Uh, like on the plane, uh, the last thing I saw on a plane was, um, it, I think, it, actually it's usually, it's usually comedies actually. Like right. it's sort of, com so it make, something to distract me from the fact that I'm actually in an aeroplane. Um, and uh, it's usually stuff that's, you know, probably rated really badly, you know, and terrible reviews, but it's just, you know, that nice, Kind of, it's like a comfort thing. It's like a big right. bowl of um, uh, like mac and cheese. Um, watching it on a pixelated, you know, Air Canada screen. Or right. You know. Um, I, you yep. I was on a plane last night uh, and uh, coming back to Toronto, and my screen didn't work. Okay. And the whole <laughs> plane, and there was no other seat. So what I did, I had in my my book, luckily, but. Um, I was watching what other people were watching too. That's always interesting. Yeah, yeah. and so the, speaking of these comedy things, so there's this couple across from me, and I don't know why, it, the last pick I ever expected them to watch, but they were both watching Alvin and the Chipmunks. Oh, yeah. oh interesting. And they were like wow. in their yeah. 50s or, I don't know what, I can't, but it was, and they were holding hands and they were watching Alvin and the Chipmunks and like laughing together and stuff, I don't know. It was just, a, yeah, like what you, Say for the. I think I'd point. watch that maybe on a like a little watch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fair, yeah, fair enough. Exactly. Fair yeah, enough. The, the, the smaller the screen, the, the worse the, the film. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what about you? I'm picky too about what I see, right. want to see in the cinema, especially since, you know, uh, movies cost so much these days. <laughs> right. Um, but I also uh, love seeing certain movies just like with a full audience, with a full audience of people there. Uh, whether it's at festival or it's opening night, mm. for example, like Star Wars or something like that. 
um, just because you can feel the energy around you and everyone's just so excited and um, or they'll like clap at certain parts if they're really into it and I, I love that just being part of the experience with other people. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. That's a good buzz. I mean, that's mm -hmm. Um, it kind of, it's weird because it kind of t distracts from all the finely tuned sound mm. in a movie theater that right. uh, someone has just labored over incessantly. And, exactly. And just popcorn too. It's like listening to a field of locusts, you know, just like, <laughs> 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 like who, like who came up with that? Like why, 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 why popcorn? Yeah. Why the loudest yeah. food you Probably can find and cheap. eat it in a movie theater? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah, like, yeah actually, actually sure. the best, um, the best Good nights point. to go to are the, um, I don't know if you've been to Midnight Madness. Here yeah. Yes, of But it's like, people are like vocal and will like shout at the screen yeah. and they're like boo and hiss and it's like, it's like going back to like the, uh, the old, uh, you know, theatre stuff. Uh, right. You know. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. But it's actually really interesting because you see the reverse at Tip Kids with, um, we've got a Real Rascals program for ages three to five. And it's typically a series of short films um, that are playing as part of the program. And after each short film, the buzz in the audience is, it's like they're all talking to each other and, and having this great conversation. And then the minute the next film comes up, dead silence. Mm -hmm. And again, when the film comes down, chat, 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 mm -hmm. talking, talking, talking. And then it's, it's really an amazing experience because they're, they're letting their parents know, they're letting the rest of the audience know what they like, what they didn't like, and you hear it. Cool. So from the programming side, it's amazing to see their reactions to what, what really is engaging or what they're connecting with. So. Now, what makes a great story? I, don't, I mean, I mean, when I'm creating stories and I'm trying to make something interesting, it's usually I'm I'm sort of putting people in a in a fantasy world, right. but there's some element that's grounded in reality. So mm -hmm. it's sort of this sort of combination of um, you know being transported, so you feel kind of like you're you know you're not in your everyday life, but at the same time, there's elements that you go, oh yeah, I can relate to that. So right. it's sort of relatability mixed with kind of sort of a high adventure, I suppose. Great story. Uh, I guess it's, I guess that sort of goes both ways, right? Because you're right. making something for an audience, so it's how they're gonna relate to it, which I don't know if you really know until mm. until you're actually finished it. At least I am, I don't right. know. But I mean, if you're making something, it should be something that you're personally interested in. Mm. Um, uh, something that, uh, that attracts you and makes you feel feel something when right. you're doing it and that you can uh, get through the process of you know production on mm -hmm. and uh, you know hopefully probably that uh, my guess is that people will like it more if you like it to be of course with. yeah definitely. Um, now if you could go back knowing what you know now what advice would you give yourself um, on on when you first embarked on your filmmaking journey I'm just happy that um, I didn't know what I right. don't know, <laughs> and what yeah. I do know now. Sure. I mean, I think that my the ignorance is bliss kind of thing. Right. Taking the leap without knowing mm -hmm. um, what it would take and like right. all the how much work it was. I, I'm just glad that I I did it anyway. You know, yeah. without seeing without the the struggles that were sure to come. But anyway, I'm just happy that I I, I didn't know what I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I would still do it again. And still do it the do same? It. Yeah, okay. yeah, I would. That's fair, all right. I would say uh, don't compare yourself to other people and uh, try to work with people who will give you the space and respect that you need to develop your own voice while you're still starting out. Mm -hmm. And just because you're working with someone who may be really talented, that doesn't mean anything if they don't respect you. Mm -hmm. And so just finding a really good team that you get along with. And That's great. Yeah. Um, just don't beat yourself up. Um, you're not going to be perfect. Uh, you know, you just, mm. who knows, those lousy experiences that you had may have made you the person that you are now. Of course. Um, and so that's helping to inform your work. Yeah. So maybe without that, maybe you wouldn't be doing as good a job as you are now. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Final cheers. Oh, yeah. oh, this was great. Oh, okay.